Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today, and for the next three days, I will be doing Christmas gift tags. So here's a selection of gift tags that I've already done. These aren't the ones that you're going to be seeing me do, but this is just to show you what I'm going to be making. So these ones are my favourites. They're like little cards. And the greeting inside I've just put on with a rubber stamp, which you'll see later on. So for each design, I've done a, a set of different images. And I did repeat one of them twice, which is that snowman you can see on the left. Not the one I'm showing you now, but the, um, the one on the simple gift tag. So I did repeat him, but the others, I, all, I did different designs to these. And I put on different cords with them. So some have got red and white, some have got gold and some have got silver. And a couple have got ribbon. So these are the, the simple ones that I'm going to be showing you today. So those are just a rectangle. And I did repeat the snow one, snowman one, as I said. Right, these ones are more like le luggage labels. And I like these better than the simple rectangle. They're very easy to make. And I just think they look more effective. And I do show you on the video and doing the luggage label ones, how to make that little pointed triangular bit at the end. So these are the ones I'm going to be making today, just simple rectangles. What you need is some good watercolour paper. 140 pounds is a good weight of paper, which equates to 300 square, no, 300 grams per square metre. Now they are size two inch by three and a half inch rectangles. And I'm going to be using my quilting ruler because it is very easy to measure out things. Now quilting rulers tend to be in inches because quilters work in inches, which is fine by me as I'm an elderly lady who still works in inches rather than centimetres. So each rectangle is three and a half by two. So the great thing about quilting rulers is that you can get good right angles if you match up the, um, the right angle with the edge. So I'm drawing this line two inches down and then you just, you can't see it on here, but you just match up on your ruler the next two inches and mark down. And then I've gone I've marked out three and a half inches along. And then join that up. You'll cut them at the end. Now I always scribble just to show where I'm not going to be painting so that I've got my waste bits shown up so that I don't inadvertently paint those. I'm just writing down on here the measurements for you really. So three and a half by two. And I will erase that at the end. So again, these are the ones I did before. I'm going to draw out my new designs. And where do I get designs from? Well, I get them from my head. I make a list of Christmas things and I keep adding to it and my list is actually quite long so I have plenty of things to think about. Now I'm going to copy the one I did on you can see in the top left hand corner which is a gift. This is the simplest drawing you can make because it's basically just a rectangle but what makes it look better is at the end when you add things like the flap of paper and you put some shading on it so you can tell where the dark side is. And that gives it more three dimensions. And also, if you put in stripes, which I will show you at the end. So I'm going to draw out each of these before I actually 
do any watercolour and colour them in. This one's a drum. This one's probably the one I liked the least, the drum. And this one is a nativity scene. Probably could have made this a little bit simpler. It more kind of like children's book characters. So if I did that one again, I would change it. And this is just a little sleigh but, and a reindeer. If you find it hard to think of things that you could use to draw, or if you need prompts, just go to Google Images and as long as you're not selling things, you can just copy them. If you're selling things, then people have copyrights and so you have to really use your own material. But find photos like the robin I showed you on an earlier one. I just found a photo of a robin and copied that because I tried drawing it freehand from my memory and it just wasn't very good. And the other two that I actually copied from photographs were the pine cones because they're very complex objects. So I felt that really I needed some help with them. <laughs> but the rest have all just come from my imagination. So here I am putting the sky in just a wet and wet wash. Be careful if you start at the bottom and work up then you're likely to smudge them. So I always start at the top and work down and that way I'm less likely to smudge what I've already drawn. I mean it happens. And holly. Holly's a really simple one to do as well. And if you wanted something very simple then just draw lots of gifts. So lots of, of um, cuboids, cubes, and make them into look like presents. So that's a really simple. And if you do them all in different colours, then every one is different. Here I am putting some shading on the present to start to make it more three-dimensional and also the start of drawing the flap. Because that will make it look more like a gift as opposed to just a simple rectangle. Be careful that your first wash is dry before you put on a different colour or else they will mix, as with all watercolours. But if you are waiting for them to dry, then start another sheet and do that one and then you can have like a production line going. I made this video as one video and it was inordinately long, like seven hours. And so I've cut it into three and don't worry, each one is not over an hour. I think this first one, I can't remember, is about 25 minutes, something like that. I think that one's the longest. So this one is similar, not the same, as the one I showed you at the beginning. And as with all watercolours, it isn't a case of one layer, it's multi-layers. So come back and each time darkening, reserving your highlights. You can, can come back in with a white gel pen or a Posca pen to put back some highlights. I did reserve some highlights on the holly berries, but I will come in again and add some Posca white to it. And if you put a little bit of shadow, it just kind of anchors it. Mm -hmm. 
And if you remember that the light and shade will also pertain to the bow and the ribbon on the actual parcel. And again, if you put in a, a little bit of shadow from the item, then it just anchors it. As I said, the drum was the one I liked the least. Just adding a little bit of shadow on the berries to kind of differentiate them and give them more three dimensions and going back in with darker shadows around it. Don't worry that that looks too dark because I can easily just put, add some more water to make it go lighter. And here I have outlined them. Some of them I outlined and some I didn't. I wished I hadn't have outlined the gift because I think it looked better not outlined. But, well, it's a gift tag. Not a masterpiece, just a gift tag. And even at the end, the drum is still the one I like the least. I've added some drumsticks there, which I will colour in as well. And I will put some decoration on the drum. So you do just keep coming back and back to each one of them again and again. So that's why it's, it's good not to just be working on one at a time. And I think it's rather nice that you've done this and you've got like a little tiny landscape or portrait that you've done and you're giving to somebody so you're giving part of yourself when you give these even though they are very time consuming I certainly wouldn't make them to sell but I did them for fun and after all, that is what art is all about, having fun. And it's the little features that really add to these things. So as I'm doing it, my mind is working. What else could I add? Of course, you can't go too far and add too much, but you want to keep it simple. But at the same time, you want to give it that kind of, ah, oh, look. Arms, really simple, because they're just branches.
just adding an extra bit of shadow to make him stand out more. And the same for the trees. Now the sleigh I put off till last because it wasn't that clear in my imagination so I will come back to that in a minute. Just adding a little bit more interest to the drum to try and improve it but I still don't like it. Now the sleigh, I have to think about this one and the reindeer. So this reindeer is just in my imagination so I'm trying to think what a reindeer really looks like. I'm quite good at drawing camels because I've drawn quite a few of them but I've never drawn a reindeer. Right, this is a Posca pen and it's white and it's very opaque. You could use white paint, I guess gouache is the best white to use because it really does stand out. But this is much easier. So I'm adding stripes because stripes are great for giving you some three dimensions to a parcel. And here it will show up the flap. I was going to put spots on it, but then I thought the spots won't show up the flap so much, which really makes you, gives the impression of wrapping paper around a gift. And now I'm coming in with the one I've put off, which is the little tiny sleigh and reindeer. Because it's tiny, it doesn't have to have much detail, and I can get away with not really understanding how a sleigh works. Or a reindeer. <laughs> so it's very simple. And I drew the outline first just to give myself something to paint into, if you like. And I've given the reindeer a little red nose, so he's kind of a Rudolph. Back to the trees, I felt they needed a little bit more definition. They weren't as good as the ones I did in, in that first attempt of the snowman that I showed you at the beginning. So now just adding the gifts to the sleigh. could have put a little gold bell around the reindeer's neck. Didn't think of that. Because you can use gold pens and silver pens. They are really good because they're opaque. Now cutting them out, I've just cut them out with scissors, but you can cut them out with a paper cutter or with a craft knife. But I just cut along the pencil lines that I'd drawn, which I will erase. Which is the next thing I'm going to do. Plus tidy up any drawing pencil marks that are still there. When you do this though, you must make sure your paint is dry or else you'll have a horrible mess. So do remember that. Right, next I'm going to make holes in the gift tags. I have a pretty appalling um, hole cutter here. Hope yours is better because this one did not cut very well at all. And sometimes I had to do it several times and then I had to tidy it up with scissors. So hopefully yours is sharper than mine. 
That's another thing though you can do is use a paintbrush handle to poke through the hole just to even up the edges and if you go from push it through from the right side then it will leave nicer edges and the untidy edges will be on the other side. Now I'm just cutting off some silver thread here to attach to the gift tag so you can attach it easily to the gift. And I like to attach these gift tags with a piece, a tiny piece of sellotape. Then on top of that, I will put a self adhesive sticker, a Christmas sticker, which you can get really cheaply. It just gives it a nice finish and hides the knot. But you can also attach it if you're putting ribbon around a pre uh, present, you can attach the um, the cord on the gift tag to the ribbon. That's another way of doing it. And I just attach it very simply, push a loop through, push the two ends through the loop and then tie it and tidy up the ends. So there's one done. Or I was just going over with a gold pen on top of the star. So this one I've done red and white because I thought it matched the gift. And I just bought the red and white uh, cord from Hobbycraft. The other two I had in my craft stash, so I'm not sure where they came from. But you can get similar things from good craft stores. See, I do have difficulty with that hole punch. I decided that I preferred the cord to the ribbon. If you use ribbon, I think you want to use a very narrow ribbon. So I made nine of these rectangular gift tags in the end, so here they all are. And I hope you'll join me tomorrow to see the luggage type labels. Happy painting and see you tomorrow. Bye.